Today we have a story time of a Gen Z kid who fakes being disabled for attention and clout. This kid literally pretends to be completely disabled from the waist down, but he gets exposed in a really funny and just awkward manner that I know you'll enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump right into the story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Gerald. So anyways, Gerald was starting the eighth grade and every single year in his school, there were new kids that would come in and, uh, you know, you're always supposed to give special attention and make sure that the new kids felt good at the new school. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, if you started a new school, especially not with a bunch of other people, you're one of the few new kids. It's very difficult as a lot of kids have already kind of formed groups and uh, cliques or whatever. So it becomes difficult to get friends, right? So this new kid, right, who we're gonna call the Gen Z kid, was not like most kids who showed up. So this kid showed up in a wheelchair, right? So on the very first day, it was very apparent that there was a new kid there because he didn't look like any of the other kids there. And everyone was really good about giving this guy extra special attention to make sure that he was, you know, doing all right. Extra special attention, I don't mean like staring and pointing attention. I mean asking, you know, if he needed, you know, needed help bringing stuff, you know, from a book bag, like his book bags around, needed help, uh, you know, guides to class, stuff like that, right? And on the very first day, uh, this kid actually, you know, a lot of people were giving him a lot of positive support, right? So Gerald was one of those kids. No, no one at this moment, literally no one at this moment, believed for a second that this kid was faking being in a wheelchair for attention. Nobody yet. Gerald would be one of the first ones to, you know, find some evidence that was suspicious, and then Gerald would be, you know, basically lambasted and made a pariah because everyone's thinking, wow, how could you accuse you know, this kid of something with such baseless accusations, you're a heartless man, but Gerald turns out to be correct. But anyways, right, so a couple weeks in the school, what happens is the Gen Z kid, since he got so much attention off the bat for one being a new kid, but also being in a wheelchair, that it almost, he almost like immediately climbed up the social ladder to like the most popular guy. Because basically the Gen Z kid, you know, he got a lot of attention from being in the wheelchair and he definitely abused it. And let me just say that a lot of times kids in school with disabilities, you know, they get picked on a lot and it's really, really unfortunate and you really do hate to see it. But the Gen Z kid was almost like a master manipulator in a sense. And so he kind of used, first of all, this is not a real, he's not actually in a wheelchair, but he kind of used his like positioning of getting a lot of attention in the very beginning and then use that to form like, you know, friendships and relationships with people that were kind of already known as the top dog or whatever. And then the wheel and then the Gen Z kid almost immediately became like the number one alpha whatever. And here's the thing, the Gen Z kid was one of the most brutal, meanest people there. However, here's the thing, right? He's already in like he's friends with everyone at the top or the top of the high school social ladder, which I mean, high school social ladder, it's kind of irrelevant or whatever. But the thing is, he was already friends with a lot of people. And the other thing is, like, if you were mean back to them, you would just be uh, immediately accosted by everyone around you because, bro, you're being mean to the person who has to, like, you know, who's going around in a wheelchair. Like, you're actually an a-hole, bro. Like, that's how people would perceive it. So the Gen Z kid was, like, actually a secret evil genius or whatever, or a super villain, basically. And uh, Gerald didn't really think about, like, didn't really think that much. Uh, but one day... About a month into school, he was having a sleepover with another friend. We're going to call this friend Ben. So Gerald and Ben went to the same school, and they both knew about the Gen Z kid. And uh, Gerald, you know, I don't know if you guys experience this, but when I have sleepovers with the boys, at a certain time, like, it's just, like, late enough at night, once you stop playing, I don't know, video games or going out and doing something, and you're just kind of chilling, you guys have those deep talks, if you guys know what I mean. So Gerald didn't want to be the guy who was, like, I don't know, dunking on the, on, the, on the kid in the wheelchair, bro. He didn't want to be that guy, right? So Gerald very sheepishly is like, oh, what do you think of uh, the Gen Z kid, right? And I say Gen Z kid not because, like, literally in the Gen Z generation. I just mean Gen Z in the fact that, like, wants extreme amounts of attention and will basically use other people's life situations to, to try and get more attention and for their own gain. That's what, some people are confused. They're like, oh, well, are you all in Gen Z's and a whole generation? That's what I mean. It's colloquial, not actually the, the, the direct exact term. But uh, yeah, so Gerald kind of like turns his friend Ben. He's like, yay. So, you know, the Gen Z kid, he's, he's pretty popular now. I mean, it's been a while since like a new student kind of rose the ranks that quickly. And Ben's like, yeah, 
he's cool. And Gerald's like, yeah. They were both very obviously trying to like skirt around the fact that they did not like this kid at all. Remember, not because of his any of his disabilities or anything, or quote unquote, huge quotations, disabilities. This kid was actually taken away from people who really have those disabilities and have to live their life with it without a choice, right? But at this point, everyone believed it was real, so let's speak as if it was real. But then Gerald was like, you know, I thought for a kid who's been through so much hardship that he would uh, that he would maybe be a little nicer to other people. And Ben's like, you know, I kind of agree. You know when you like you and your friend have this like slightly controversial opinion? Maybe it's not even that slightly controversial, but you you don't know if they share the same opinion and you know if they do, if they disagree with you, they're going to be really mad. So you slightly slowly kind of like kind of like ease towards that opinion, right? And then they slightly ease towards that opinion. It's almost like you're going in for a kiss, bro. Oh, wait, wait, kiss the homies? Wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, but anyways, eventually Gerald and Ben, they're talking and they just get straight to it. And they're like, I can't believe this kid's such a jerk to everyone. I mean, the Gen Z kid would literally start like being like, uh, like just calling people out for no good reason. He'd be like, you know, rolling with his like group of other popular people. And it would be like, I don't know, man, it'd be like, uh, he'd be rolling by with like the other people and they'd pass by some kid who was like, I don't know, a little scruffy looking. The Gen Z kid's like, when's the last time you took a shower? And would like point at some kid and all the kids rolling with him would be like laughing or whatever. And dude, if this kid was trying to clap back, you know, they'd all be like, wait a minute, man, this guy's in a wheelchair. You can't come for him. And that's the most messed up thing. The Gen Z kid was literally using other people's life struggles, other people's serious issues as a kind of shield to defend against him being a bad person and him being able to do what he wants, which is, you know, absolutely ridiculous, right? So at this point, Ben and Gerald have been talking for like an hour about how like insane it is that everyone just kind of lets this behavior go, that no one has an issue with this, on and on and on. But other than that little conversation that Gerald and Ben have, it's not as if they do that much. It's also not as if they're going to share that opinion. Because the thing is, people will kind of look at them the wrong way. Yeah, this kid was a jerk, but he was also fairly popular. And also, you know, the very, you know, the elephant in the room is people are going to be like, man, like, relax. Like, he has a tough life. Like, maybe he's just taking it out on people. So uh, Gerald and Ben, while they have this opinion and they do share it together, and it was almost like, it was almost like a relief that he was able to share that opinion. I don't know if you guys have ever, like, felt like, oh, I can't say what I'm thinking, and then you're able to, like, I- express that opinion with your best friend or with a friend. It's just such a relief, right? But anyways, um, so they get back to school, and for the next, like, couple weeks, it is just on and on and on of just, like, the kid's getting worse. Like, I, like, everyone's thinking, like, how could this kid possibly get worse? D- the Gen Z kid continues on his rampage. It's like he just refuses to stop. He just continues to be a big jerk. And he just will... It's like he's refusing to stop being a massive jerk to everyone. And it's kind of ridiculous. And he's getting worse and worse. And there's a little bit of growing sentiment against the Gen Z kid, right? But everyone is way too scared to, like, form any opinion. Look, this is only 8th grade... Or to share an opinion. Look, this is only 8th grade right? This is only eighth graders, but this kid might actually be like a, I don't know, a, a, a Marvel super villain. He's got that crazy planning, bro. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like he's somehow been able to orchestrate like a kind of a social defense system where he can be the worst kid ever and actually be a massive jerk, but no one can oppose him without being weird. So anyway, or being uh, ostracized by their community. Anyways, here's the thing. So this, uh, the, the downfall of the Gen Z kid all started one day. So Gerald was walking alone in the hallways. It was kind of close to after school. And he walks around and he tor- turns a corner and he sees the Gen Z kid. And for a split second, he thinks to himself, wait a minute, because he looks at the Gen Z kid and it looks like he sat down. It looks like the Gen Z kid just sat down into his wheelchair, which doesn't make sense. The lower half of his body doesn't move, but he was certain what he saw. But he also, while he was certain what he saw, he was thinking, well, maybe it was just some kind of an illusion. Maybe I just wasn't seeing things right. There was a lot of possibilities. And eventually, you know, Gerald does turn the corner and he's in the same hallway as the Gen Z kid. And uh, 
Gerald is like so distracted in thought that he kind of like trips over his own feet a little bit. He doesn't trip and fall on the ground, but I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. I definitely have where you're walking, but you're just not paying attention and you just kind of like trip over your own feet, but catch yourself pretty quickly. And as he's walking by the Gen Z kids like, oh, oh man, watch out. Your feet are there. Kind of as like a joke of like, you just tripped over nothing, bro. How do you trip over nothing? Like, seriously, how do you trip over nothing? Kind of like a joke like that. And, you know, I don't know. Gerald is kind of looking at him like, all right, man. And Gerald just keeps walking. And he just can't get over the fact that he knew what he saw. He was like, no, this, this can't be right. Because, like, while he, had, while he was thinking that the Gen Z kid was, a, you know, a pretty big jerk, and there was no question about that, at the same time, Gerald did not for a single second until this, or before this, ever thought that the Gen Z kid was faking, you know, being in a wheelchair. He just thought that, wow, like... This kid is like a jerk and also happens to be in a wheelchair. Like you can be both of those at the same time. You know what I mean? So uh, he, Gerald just can't get this out of his mind. He just is like, he, he just keeps walking, keeps thinking about it. And for the rest of the, like the day, he can't focus in class. Actually, no, not focus in class. Cause it was towards the end of the day for the rest of the time at home, trying to do homework. He was like struggling, bro. He was struggling to pay attention. Cause he was like, I know what I saw. I, I, I know what I saw. Yeah, so he gets back home, and this is where he does a little uh, investigating. So basically, the Gen Z kid told everyone a very specific story about what happened in his life and how he got there. Basically, the Gen Z kid said he got in a really bad car crash when he was four years old, and that, you know, uh, I, I don't know, like, after that point, he had to be in a wheelchair, and the bottom, like, his, his, like, uh, bo like his bottom half didn't work, right? Or it was, like, paralyzed or whatever. So that was the story that he told everybody. And uh, Gerald was just like, he's like, I, I, I'm just so, like he goes on this kid's Instagram. And sure enough, this kid has like one post and it's him like holding a fish or whatever. And he's in the wheelchair. And it was, it's very recent, right? It was a post made like while this kid was at school and he had no other posts. So what Gerald does is he goes to this kid's uh, tagged post. So on Instagram, by the way, follow me on Instagram at Connor Pugs. You can submit your stories there and also you can watch my shorts on there or reels or whatever it's called, right? Uh, I do little short stories on there. Anyways, right, so he goes in the kid's tagged photos. He's looking through the tagged photos and he's just, you know, finding like, I don't know, he's not finding that much. And he's finding like a lot of like memes or whatever that his friends posted on their Instagram and like tagged him in or whatever. I don't know, but like back when I was in eighth grade, I would just like screenshot funny memes and post them on my main Instagram. Like now I just don't post anything, bro. I'm just like, nah, I'm not posting anything. But that's how I'd use it back in the day. But he just kept scrolling and he found the photo at the very bottom of the tag. It was from five years ago. So quite a while ago. But the Gen Z kid was definitely older than four at this point. So it was a photo of a bunch of kids all standing up together. First of all, <laughs> I think you guys caught it. They're all standing up together. But it must have been either a camp or a school they used to go to or some kind of after school program or something. And uh, since they were in eighth grade, it was like four or five years ago or whatever. You know, the Gen Z kid was probably like third or fourth grade. When you're in fourth grade, you are significantly older than four, unless you're baby Einstein or whatever. But he was obviously much older than four. And Gerald is just staring at this photo. And he can't stop staring at the photo. Because he's looking at the photo, and every kid is standing upright. And there's a kid who looks like the Gen Z kid when he was like three or four years younger, probably. This kid was standing up. This kid was 100% standing up, no questions. No wheelchair in sight, no nothing. And Gerald is just like, oh my God. Like this kid cleaned up his profile. Like he must have like, he probably had photos from back in the day that he scrubbed and all this kind of stuff, right? And maybe if any of his older friends who still follow him commented on the post saying, wait, you're in a wheelchair now? Deleted those comments, right? He did a good job scrubbing his profile except for one photo. Here's the thing though, Gerald made a bit of a mistake. Instead of screenshotting the photo, he just assumed, oh, well, you know, this is in the tag, so I can just tell people to go check out the Gen Z kids tagged photos. So anyways, the next day in school, Gerald immediately is like, all right, well, I gotta spread the truth because, you know, even though I do have an agenda against this kid, I don't really like him. I, I, it's better that people know the truth and that's the most important thing. Anyways, though, so right, Gerald now has information. Gerald now has proof 
that the whole time the Gen Z kid has been faking it. Gerald doesn't totally understand why, Gerald doesn't understand how, Gerald doesn't understand a lot of details. However, what Gerald does know is that there is a photo on this kid's Instagram page that shows him very clearly standing up when, you know, he can't stand up. This kid cannot stand up, bro, at least from what he's been told or what he's told everyone else. So Gerald knows this and he knows he's, you know, this is what he's going to spread. So there was a very strict no phones policy at school. Everyone's phones had to be in their backpacks and like teachers would legitimately like take someone's phone for an entire week if they saw it. So the problem was, was that for the longest time, not, not, not the longest time, but for the duration of the day, you couldn't be on your phone. A few kids would occasionally like sneak them around, but just, just the whole risk of having your phone taken away for an entire week, you weren't even allowed to get it at the end of the day. You had to wait till the end of the week to get it, man. So a lot of kids were just like, all right, fine, whatever, we just won't go on our phones. So here's the problem, right? Gerald immediately starts telling everyone in person about what's happened. So instead of sending them the Instagram post over Instagram DMs the night before or waiting till he got back to send Instagram, like the Instagram post to people, what Gerald does, and he admits this was a mistake in retrospect, was he just simply tells people, if you go on, this, on the Gen Z kids Instagram tonight and you go to his tag section, you scroll all the way down, you will find a photo from three to four years ago in which the Gen Z kid is very clearly standing up. And if you remember his story, well, he was like paralyzed in a car crash at the age of three or four, not like 12 or 13. Huge discrepancy right there. So word spread extremely quickly. This is a relatively small school, so word tends to spread kind of quickly, but especially some allegation of this like magnitude. The other thing that happened was that Gerald's name was attached to this allegation. Basically, he said this, and everyone went around saying Gerald is saying that the Gen Z kid is faking it and he has proof. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment proof down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And while you're in the comment section, check out the pinned comment on the video. That's a link to the Spotify page in which I, in which I upload all these story times as podcasts on there. And also a link to three other channels I run and post daily on. So please subscribe to all three of those uh, to help me out. And yeah, let's get right back to it. So anyways, right, uh, word spread extremely quickly that Gerald was claiming that the Gen Z kid faked everything. So pretty big al uh, accusations, uh, allegations, whatever, right? And uh, here's the thing. So Gerald was, uh, he, you know, he told everyone people were talking about it and uh, no one really had access to their phones. A lot of people wanted to, but what ended up happening was the school day eventually ended and like every, this was like everybody was talking about it. And when I mean everybody, I mean everybody was talking about this, bro. Like everyone was talking about it. So uh, yeah, Gerald, uh, you know, he, he got back home or he's getting in the car with his mom and he goes into his backpack and he pulls out his phone. After about like five minutes, he receives a text notification from someone in his class. Not that he's like super close friends with, but I think they must have had like a uh, either a grade large group chat or maybe he needed to exchange numbers for a project they did in class. But for some reason, right, he had Gerald's personal number. And uh, so Gerald receives a text from some guy he's kind of friends with being like, and it says something along the lines of, bro, why did you make up that stuff about the Gen Z kid? So Gerald is like super confused at this point and he responds to the text, what do you mean? And the kid says, I went to the Gen Z kids page and I can't find the post. Like there's no post at all. And you know, Gerald's like, what? So Gerald opens up his Instagram and he goes to the post or he goes to the Gen Z kids account and he goes to the tag section and he scrolls all the way down and he keeps looking. He looks all for it. Like he's like, oh, maybe it's not the very last one and I remembered it wrong. Maybe it's like a couple posts down, but not the very last. Gerald looks through every single tagged post and it's gone. The, basically, the proof of the Gen Z kid faking it is gone. And that's when Gerald realizes that what must have happened was that because word spread so quickly and that Gerald didn't attach any actual proof with his, uh, with his accusations, he told people to go look for it, word must have got back to the Gen Z kid. The Gen Z kid brushed it off like, oh, no, no, no. Then the Gen Z kid must have immediately taken the risk and gone on his phone and removed himself from the tag post, right? Because you can go to Instagram and you can re remove yourself if you're tagged in a post. 
And the thing is, Gerald, I said this earlier, never got a screenshot, bro. He never got a screenshot. He never, he could not for the life of him remember the name of the account that like tagged him. Cause it was like, uh, it was like, uh, I don't know, uh, Megatron 48, 768 pi square. It's like some crazy username that you just won't remember. So at this point, Gerald's like, oh no. So yeah, within the next 30 minutes, Gerald probably receives 25 different messages, either on Snapchat, Instagram DMs, text message. Uh, probably got a few faxes coming in too, basically being like, dude, that's crazy for you to like. It was either along the lines of, that's messed up for you to make that stuff up about the Gen Z kid, or something like, dude, can you send me the post? I can't find it. Or just like, wait, are you sure that you saw what you saw? Like around, it was basically a bunch of variations of those three messages. Yeah, so Gerald was like, oh, crap, bro. There's no way. Uh, yeah, Gerald got bamboozled. The Gen Z kid, he should have realized he got, you got to get screenshots. You got to get the receipts, man, especially on something where the guy can get rid of the receipts. And the thing is, too, if the school didn't have such strict rules about having no phones or whatever, kid probably would have just pulled out his phone, checked and been like, yep, here's proof, right? But no, people just waited till they got back. But I guess the Gen Z kid realized that he needed to take the risk and go on his phone. And honestly, like, Gerald didn't even see this coming. I think he totally forgot about the fact that you can remove yourself from an Instagram post. So yeah, Gerald got completely frickin' bamboozled here, bro. He got absolutely owned. And let me just say that socially, he got really owned. So yeah, he received a ton of text messages that night along, you know, I already told you the three, basically the either being like, how dare you do this? Or the, I can't find the post or are you sure you saw it correct, bro? And uh, yeah, so Gerald, so like Gerald wasn't like, I don't know, the popular kid that, you know, oh no, his reputation's ruined. The only thing he has going for him is the fact that he's quote unquote popular in high school, which, oh yeah, that means so much, bro, of course. Yeah, but at the same time, like, Gerald, like, would have kind of, like, friends, people, I don't know if you guys have this, but, like, more casual friends in class, people he would be, there are some people Gerald was really close with, but there's also a lot of people that he was his kind of friends with, and, like, people he'd sit with, people he'd get lunch with, people he'd walk with, like, you know, he was a, he wasn't necessarily a popular guy in the sense he was, like, I don't know, on the hockey team, or had some kind of, like, social clout like that, but he was a very kind of, like, he was a very talkative person and he spoke to a lot of people and for that reason he was always like he had a lot of people that he was kind of casually friends with and not like two very close friends and that's it so yeah for the next week gerald has like one of the wo worst social experiences of his life he's completely ostracized as everyone thinks that he made this up about the gen z kid just to make him look bad which not only are you making some kid look bad based off you know factless or just like not true accusations you're also trying to like tear down the kid that like already has a difficult life because he's disabled and in a wheelchair it's a terrible 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 look for gerald yeah, so this is probably one of the hardest weeks because a lot, some people still hang out with him, some people don't really care. Like, obviously, or not, I shouldn't say obviously, but his closest friends are still friends with him. That didn't change, which is pretty cool. I shouldn't say obviously because, I don't know, sometimes close friends aren't actually as close as you think. And even some of his casual friends don't care and they're like, all right, bro, whatever. But a lot of his kind of like casual friends, while they weren't like, you can't sit with us, a lot of them would like, I don't know. There's a lot of like uh, things people can do to kind of, uh, you know, imply that they don't want to hang out with you, such as you sit down somewhere in your unassigned assigned seats and then they decide to sit somewhere different, even though they've sat in the exact same spot for half a year. I don't know, if you normally walk with someone, they quickly walk to their next class instead of waiting for you or they stay behind. Just a lot of like things that Gerald was noticing that people were definitely avoiding him, which partly he couldn't blame because he's like, dang, I don't know if I'd want to hang out with me too if like I believe the rumor going or I believed what people believe. And Gerald also didn't blame people for believing what they believed. I mean, people went to the Instagram page and nothing was there. Why would they believe him? Of course, all this did end up changing when the Gen Z kid exposes himself as a fraud in front of basically everyone at the school. And Gerald gets an instant redemption when that happens. So let me just kind of jump to that situation. So it's about two weeks and after Gerald, like two weeks of like turmoil for Gerald where no one wants to hang out with them. 
people are always like a lot of people are talking about him about he kind of he got exposed oh my god gerald seems like such a nice guy but he's making fun of the gen z kid making up rumors about him like wow gerald's actually a snake blah, blah, all this kind of stuff right and so it's a really tough week for gerald or two weeks or whatever and uh, this school doesn't have any fire drills i think they have like the most lame excuse for a fire drill you've ever seen like i think the school what they'll do is they'll like i don't know i think they'll put on like they'll be like all right guys if there's a fire what do you do and they say uh walk out or like i don't know walk outside and the teacher's like good okay let's get back to class so they never never really had an actual fire drill so uh when the fire alarm went off during the school meeting when everyone was there it was almost a bit of chaos that ensued yeah, so they were in just a meeting, and since they never had the fire alarm ever go off, because they never had a real fire drill, as I was just explaining, when the fire alarm goes off, everyone freaks out and panics. This is why you have fire drills. So when it actually goes off, and by the way, there was no fire. It was like, I don't know, some kind of bug got into the system, like an actual physical bug climbed in there and set it off or something. But uh, yeah, when there's, that's why you do drills. So when it actually happens, you don't panic, freak out, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, so anyways, right, uh, everyone freaks out, and everyone's sitting in the auditorium. So immediately the teacher runs up to the, to the speakers, like, everyone get up, file, single file out of here, go immediately to the front lawn, and people were, were cramming the door. It was an absolute disaster, bro. It was a blank show. It was not good right now. And I think afterwards they started implementing actual fire drill just because of how bad this was, even though it wasn't an actual fire. But anyways, everyone immediately gets up and starts running towards the door. Listen to my sentence, the words I just said very closely because I did not misspeak. Everyone gets up and starts running towards the door. Everyone. You know who was in that meeting? The Gen Z kid. So everyone, and at the moment, no one really notices. Maybe a few people are like, wait, what? I'm hallucinating, bro. But no one really notices as everyone is running very quickly to try and get out the door. And so they all get outside and they all kind of like, form a big clump or whatever in the grass, the fields outside, and the teachers are like, all right, uh, like, go by your, everyone, find your fifth period class, like, find your teacher for your fifth period class, they're going to take your attendance, make sure you're all here, fifth period was going to be right after school meeting anyways, so everyone gets in those lines, right, and Gerald is like kind of all frazzled or whatever as the energy was insane, and he was like, oh my god, like, everyone's going crazy, but he looks over, he's just kind of like casually looking around, and he looks at the Gen Z kid, who is standing in line, standing. And the people in the Gen Z's, like, kids' is, like, class or whatever, the fifth period class, are kind of looking at him. Looking at him with this weird look. And Gerald taps, like, the shoulder of his friend, Ben, who happens to be in the fifth grade class. The one, remember, way back when he had, a, like, a sleepover and him and Ben were like, oh, that kid's the worst. Taps his shoulder, points at the Gen Z kid. And she, he's standing. He's standing there. So slowly, everyone starts staring at the Gen Z kid. And the Gen Z kid doesn't even realize what just happened. And so, yeah, uh, everyone starts to realize that the Gen Z kid is standing there. And eventually, the Gen Z kid realizes what's up. And he, like, he just, st he freezes. Like, he was kind of, like, casually, like, standing there. But you could just tell that, like, Gerald could tell the moment that the Gen Z kid realized that he messed up. Because the Gen Z kid was just standing there, stiff as a freaking broomstick, frozen with fear, because he doesn't know how to get out of this situation. He's probably going through, like, a billion calculations in his head of, oh, what's the most optimal thing I can do to save myself? But he went through all of them, and none of them worked. Zero. There's no way to explain this. He starts, like, turning to his classmates and being like, oh my god, guys, I don't know how this happened, but I'm, I, I, must, I must have been cured. Like, I, I'm feeling so much better. And they're all just looking at him. Because they knew the rumors that he was faking it. And then they all were like, wow, he got accused of faking it and it's false? So everyone in the back of their mind was now kind of like open to the idea that he might be faking it because a rumor spread about that even though that rumor was proven to be false. So now that there was proof that all of them could see the Gen Z kid was faking it, now there was nothing the Gen Z kid would do. From that day on, the Gen Z kid did not come in with a wheelchair because he's not actually disabled, right? He's an he walks normally, immediately to the very bottom of the social structure. No one wanted to hang out with him. Even the kids that nobody liked didn't want to hang out with him. No one wanted to hang out with him. And Gerald immediately kind of got the whole, 
like, no one apologized to Gerald, which is pretty funny, but, like, the, you know how I was telling you earlier that some people who, like, stopped, wa- like, would, like, kind of, like, walk faster than him or wouldn't wait for him or would sit at different tables? All those people just started hanging out with Gerald again. Like, nothing just happened. One thing I will say is Gerald will always remember the people that stuck with him through thick and thin, the people that either believed him or not, but knew his character, so decided to kind of, like, Make a bet on him. Make a bet on him actually being good, a good person and not doing what people said that he did. Gerald will never forget those people. And still to this day, the Gen Z kid is super ostracized. And uh, Gerald said that actually by the end of that year, the Gen Z kid had moved schools and was going to another school. So by the time ninth grade rolls around,